if wait until 6 uh, zero 05 and uh, we will start just we will wait three other minutes and okay. uh, just to okay. make sure that uh, everyone uh, has uh, joined us yeah yeah sure um, so yeah, in the meanwhile, I can just uh, say a thing or two about me. First of all, thanks a lot for organizing this, um, uh, and it, it's going to be fun to talk to all of you. Especially thanks to Haifa and Muna for like organizing and like you know publicizing this event. Um, so I am currently a postdoc postdoctoral researcher in social psychology at uh, Max Planck Institute for human development in Berlin. Um, I trained in physics, but my PhD is in cognitive neuroscience. And during my postdoc, I got interested via my academic work in also software development. And that's how I got into making our packages. Today, I'll be talking about one of this package, um, but there are a few other packages that I have worked on or collaborated uh, with other people on. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited to talk to you about this particular package. And I'll try to wrap up in 30 minutes, right? So that we have like 15 minutes for question. Is that the plan? Yes. This is it. Just uh, we will wait uh, another one minute and we will start. So uh, I'm very happy uh, to have you with, uh, with us today uh, for speaking about your package uh, GGS uh, that mm -hmm. float, I already use it and okay. uh, <laughs> cool. I already find it very useful uh, and very good package. So uh, I want that uh, the R community and our followers and our lady tunis also uh, have the opportunity to use it and uh, to get introduced to it. Uh, because actually when we did the uh, uh, when we did a uh, box plot mm -hmm. the problem is that we can't include statis statistics in in it and when you use the uh, ggplot2 it's a little bit uh, difficult but with the ggs stat uh, plot it's uh, very easy uh, to get uh, those type of graphs cool i'm i'm very happy to hear that I'll be preaching to the choir then. <laughs> cool. So uh, we have people from all over the world, as I said, we have people from New York, from Nigeria, from France, from Luxembourg, from Malaysia, from Algeria. So uh, we are very happy, <laughs> not only people from Tunis, but uh, all over the world. That's really cool. I don't know if you know about Tunisia or not, but uh, we are a small country in North Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we start uh, using, we start our chapter in, uh, in May uh, 2020. And uh, we, our lady Tunis has a lot of meetups. Uh, the frequency of our meetups is uh, maybe uh, an average two me two meetups in a month. So uh, I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's time to start. We already have thirty four participants with us. So uh, I think it's time to start. Okay. Cool. So I can share my screen now. Yes. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, cool. Um, so thank you again for the organizers for organizing this uh, wonderful event. And I'm really happy that we have a significant number of participants from all over the world. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm currently uh, based in Berlin at Max Planck Institute. I work primarily in social psychology um, and do research on ethics of artificial intelligence. But today I'm very happy to talk about some of the software development work I have done, especially I would like to talk about an R package, which belongs to the ggplot2 universe, 
um, and it's called GG Stats Blog. Okay, so the plan uh, today is to wrap this up in 30 minutes. So I'll try my best to stick to the to the time frame. Um, so first, why this package exists? What are the primary functions? I'll just give a demo of these functions. Then what are the benefits uh, of using this package and its customizability? And what are some of the misconceptions and limitations of this package? So why GG Stats Blog? So, um, Currently, if you go on CRAN, which is the comprehensive uh, archival of like all the R packages uh, that we use, there are over 16,000 uh, number of uh, R packages. So anytime anyone makes a new package, the question is, why do you want to make this package, right? So the short answer to this is, uh, it's a unique package that provides a collection of highly information-rich plots that have statistical details included in them and I personally feel, and I will try to convince, that it's suitable for not only for like scholarly publications, but also for quick and dirty exploratory data analysis. So typically, the data analysis workflow uh, comprises of the following steps. You import the data, you tidy the data up. This figure comes from the tidyverse developers, so uh, the tidying step is important there. And then you have uh, transforming the data in a way that you can visualize the data. And then you have these two steps, right? In exploratory data analysis, you have two steps, data visualization and statistical modeling. But these are interlinked in, in the sense that visualization can inform you that, well, we should use a different model. And the modeling can itself tell you that maybe a different visualization is in order, and so on and so forth. So the central idea of GGStats plot is simple combine these two phases into one by having a graphics that, com that contains the uh, statistical details in itself. So I shouldn't have to tell this uh, to all of you. You probably already know this. It's really, really, really important for us to visualize the data before uh, we can interpret uh, the statistical results uh, that we, we run on this data. So this is illustration of data source where you have these different types of data patterns, all of which have the same values for mean and standard deviation and same correlation coefficient. So unless and until you visualize the data, you're not going to get, get this comprehensive picture of whether the underlying data actually follows the statistical assumptions or not. So ggplot stands for grammar of graphics, which is a powerful theoretical framework that was developed by Wilkinson. And this was implemented in an R package by Hadley Wickham. And uh, grammar of graphics, let it, it's a very powerful framework because it lets you create pretty much infinite number of graphics, each tailored for your own specific data visualization problem. Uh, but this means that you also have to customize a lot uh, for, uh, for getting the kind of plot that you want. Oftentimes, we have to make the same kinds of plots again and again because the hypotheses that we have tend to be common. Like, are there differences between these two groups? Uh, is there a correlation between two variables? Uh, and in these kinds of cases, it can be a painful task to keep coming up with uh, uh, customized plots because it, it's going to be time consuming. And anytime you have to invest so much time into uh, creating a visualization, it's likely that we might just say, well, I will come back to that later and we just forget about it. So it, sometimes having customized plots helps uh, in, in exploratory phase. Another problem which you might have encountered in our ecosystem is that there is just no, um, no consistency in, in the syntax. So for example, if you just look at the stats package in, R, uh, in base R, you have like three different commands to uh, get correlation. It can be lm, core, or core.test. But depending on which function you use, you can either give it a formula or not, uh, or the formula interface itself will be very different. Uh, oops, sorry. Formula interface can itself be very different uh, based on what you get. And this is a big problem because it means that you constantly have to think about uh, what's the argument, what's the data structure that I should be providing to the given package. And this is just within one package. Think about how these things, changes, uh, these things change when you move from one package to another. So you constantly have to keep changing your data. Um, but on the other hand, in ggstatsplot, 
It has a very consistent API. All the functions rely on data. Uh, it expects a data frame. The data has to be in a tidy uh, format, and it accepts symbols as arguments. This is important because we, if the, given the popularity of tidy words, people have kind of come to expect that if you just put symbols as arguments, they will, they, that will work. So um, this is a package that is currently available on CRAN. The latest version is 0.6.6. Uh, and you can also get the development version on GitHub. Um, so we'll just first load the needed packages. And here's the demo of the primary functions. So I'm going to break it down, uh, the, the available functions, based on what's actually the hypothesis that we're talking about. So one of the most common hypotheses we have is hypothesis about group differences, or like differences between different conditions. And there we have two different functions. Uh, actually. A, a GG between stats and GG within stats if you have multiple groups, you know. So if you have two groups, it's going to be a t-test. If more than two, it's going to be an ANOVA. And you also have a single group uh, differences where you're basically comparing if the mean uh, is different from zero. So for this, there are two functions, GG histostats and GG dot plot stats. So we'll begin with GG between stats. So this is what the, um, uh, the function looks like. Here you have to give just three arguments, uh, a data, uh, x, which is the grouping variable, and y, which is the numeric variable. And the function will internally decide whether to run a t-test or an ANOVA based on number of groups that exist. Now, as, uh, as you can see, it's a very uh, rich plot, uh, which returns a number of details. So for one thing, you get the raw data and the distributions, so you can see that you, you have the raw uh, uh, points, uh, which are jittered. You also have the distribution of the data in terms of a violin. You also have the mean values uh, tagged for each of the group. You get number of uh, data points in each group as n uh, at the bottom. Um, you also have the descriptive statistics uh, in the plot. Then you have, if you look at the subtitle, you have the statistics plus V value, you have an appropriate effect size and its confidence interval, you get, also get the number of observations. Not only that, it also runs uh, pairwise comparison tests. Because this is an ANOVA, often we'll be interested in uh, following up the main effect with uh, pairwise comparisons. And here it's only displaying the significant uh, comparisons. In addition to that, if you look at the caption, it also gives you the base factor uh, for the for the one-way ANOVA uh, compared to the null hypothesis. So it also incorporates Bayesian hypothesis testing, and it also gives you a Bayesian estimation. So here the estimate is for uh, R squared posterior uh, for this particular model compared to the null. Now, if all, like if none of, some of this doesn't make sense to you, just ignore it for now. I'll come back to it later as to why it, it was important to implement the base factors also uh, in these plots. Now we'll see how, uh, all, so these are just the defaults. As you can see, I have just given it data X and Y, but the same output can be modified a bit further uh, by specifying, for example, a different type of test. So here uh, I have changed type is equal to NP, which stands for non-parametric. So as you can see, it automatically adjusted the, the statistical details and ran a kruskal wallace test and uh, also adjusted the effect size it gave and it's still giving all the uh, important details that we saw in the previous plot, but now it's just non-parametric statistics. And you can see if you, you can change the type argument to one of the four options, P is for parametric, NP is for non-parametric, R is for robust, and B, BF is for base factor. Not only that, you can also uh, uh, choose what kind of pairwise comparisons you want to display. Here I have chosen pairwise display equal to NS, which stands for non-significant. So you can either show all the significant comparisons or all the non-significant comparison or all of the comparisons. Uh, depends on what you want to, uh, want to highlight. And whatever you choose to display, the, this information will become contained in the caption. So if you look at the caption, the caption describes the pairwise test, which was run here, is Dunn's test which is the appropriate non-parametric test for this design, and the comparison shown, uh, shown are only uh, non-significant. Additionally, you can also adjust the method uh, used for uh, p-value uh, adjustment for multiple comparisons, and that will also be displayed in the, in the pairwise comparison. As can be seen here, it's described as p-FTR corrected. So the correction we have used is FTR. 
Another um, interesting aspect of this is uh, you can use this function for outlier tagging. So there's an argument outlier tagging equal to true. If I set it to true, it will tag the outliers. Uh, so for example, here my data is about movies. Uh, and on x-axis, you have the MPA rating that is given to these movies. So it can be PG-13, PG, or R-rated movie. And on y-axis, you have the rating given to the movie. And let's say well, I'm interested in outliers in, in, in the sense that I want to see which are really bad movies, you know. And that's what it's tagging here. If I set outlier tagging equal to true, and if I can also give the outlier label. So here I have said, uh, said outlier dot label equal to title which means that it will uh, tag the outliers uh, by column called title. So here it's tagging uh, uh, these outliers with movie titles. Uh, and as you can see, Battlefield Earth is like one of the worst movies ever. And it's using Tukey's Fences method to, uh, to tag these outliers. Um, next function is gg within stats. This is exactly the same as gg between stats. The only difference is that here you are interested in repeated measures. Um, and that's why gg between goes to gg within. And the only thing that changes in the plot structure is that there is now a connecting line between the means just to sh highlight the fact that this is a bad design. This is a within subjects design. And once again, all the default returns that you saw in GG between stats are also observed here. And again, you can choose type of statistics that you want to run. It can be parametric, non-parametric, et cetera. Um, now let's move from multiple group comparisons to one group comparison. And here, basically, the, uh, the hypothesis is going to be about whether the mean of a given distribution is differ different from a specified value. So let's say here I'm interested in figuring out whether the mean budget, which is what is plotted on the y-axis, is uh, different than $30 million. And my mean is 29.85, so we should expect that this is, um, this is not the case. And if you look at the p-value in the subtitle, that's, the, that's true. So again, um, the defaults here are returning counts plus proportion for the bins. Uh, because this is a histogram, you have bin data, so it's also giving you uh, counts for these bins. Uh, per beans, uh, it's giving you descriptive statistics, it's giving you statistics plus p-value, effect size plus CIs, Bayesian hypothesis testing, Bayesian estimation. And once again, you can uh, change the type of statistics to parametric, non-parametric, robust, or base factor. Uh, now here, GG stats is mainly important for distribution of numeric variable when it's not labeled, but sometimes you have labeled numeric variables. And that's when ggplotstats comes into play. So here, the only difference between ggsto and ggplot is that the, the numeric variable has labels. So here you can see, again, we're interested in uh, if the budget is different from a certain value. But now I want to see it by the genre of the movie. So that's what's plotted on the y-axis. You have genre. And on x-axis, you have the budget. And we're testing if the budget is higher than uh, actually different than the test value of $52 million, and it is significantly different, as can be seen in the subtitle p-value. And once again, everything that you got from GG history stats, you're going to get from GG.plot stats. Now, all of this was about um, group comparisons, right? Either two, uh, three groups, multiple groups, or just one group. Um, but Often we also have a hypothesis about correlation, and it can be about correlation between two numeric variables or correlations between multiple numeric variables. And depending on what you're interested in, you have two different functions that you can choose from. So first function is GG scatter stats, where you have uh, to figure out, uh, you want to figure out if there is any correlation between two numeric variables. Again, the function call is simple. You just give data x and y, two variables that you're interested in. And this is uh, what you get in return by default. Again, you get raw data, uh, as you can see uh, the points here. And you also get marginal distributions, which can be helpful to figure out you know, if there are outlier values, et cetera. And once again, you have rich statistical details included here, um, statistic plus p-value, effect sizes, the whole shebang. 
You can also use this function for conditional point tagging. So sometimes we're interested in tagging particular points, especially, for, for example, in psychology experiments, uh, if you have uh, from this, from, for each participant, two different measurements, and you want to figure out if, if there is an outlier value, which is this participant who is giving this weird responses, you can use uh, this, uh, this particular facility in this function to tag those values. So basically, you just give it label.var argument, so which is the uh, variable you want to use for labeling, and you give an expression. So here, I'm the expression I'm giving is tag the data point, which, uh, which corresponds to a movie which has budget over $150 million and which has a rating over 7.5 on IMDb, and that's Spider-Man 2. And as you, if, as you can see here, one thing that has changed is the marginal distribution. So I have changed this argument called marginal.type to density, and now it's giving me a density plot uh, for marginal distribution. And you have different options here. You can choose from histogram, box plot, density, or violin, or densigram. Um, the next one is uh, investigating correlation between uh, number of variables. So here I'm showing correlation between uh, four different variables from this uh, data set called Star Wars. Um, and here the defaults return uh, effect size, which is the correlation coefficient and significance. Uh, so if there is a cross, as you can see, there's a cross between mass and height, that means that particular correlation is not significant. And this, this, is, this can be seen uh, from the caption. The caption says, cross is equal to non-significant non -significant at p less than 0.05. And it also tells you that these uh, p-values are adjusted for uh, multiple comparisons because we are running multiple correlation tests here, and the p-value adjustment is home. Uh, that, that's the correction we have used. Another important thing is that by default, uh, this function is very careful in terms of handling of NAs. Um, so it will delete uh, the NAs pairwise, which means that you will have different sample sizes for different uh, correlation tests. And in the legend, uh, as you can see in the legend, it tells you what was the minimum number of sample sizes for any test, what was the mode, and what was the max. So if you have a huge array of uh, of variables that are being correlated with each other, this legend can tell you, uh, you know, if you should be careful about interpreting some of those uh, correlation uh, results because the number of pairs is just not enough. Um, and once again, here you can change the type of test to parametric, non-parametric, robust. Base factor is currently not implemented just because it doesn't go from minus one to one, so I'm, I, I still don't have clear uh, idea about how I can display it. Um, that said, you can still use it to get a data frame. So the default is always output is equal to plot, but you can set output is equal to data frame and type is equal to base factor, and it will return uh, all the details for the correlation coefficient in a nice data frame. So now let's move on to another type type of data that we, we often encounter, which is hypothesis about composition of categorical variables, right? So quantitative data uh, factors. Um, here you have two functions, ggpystats and ggbarstats. They are basically pretty much identical. Um, whether you want to use either of them depends on whether you like pi or not. Um, yeah. So in GGPI stats, um, by default, uh, we're going to check if the what's the association between different categorical variables. So again, uh, the uh, function by default expects only three arguments, data, x, and y. Um, so here I'm subsetting the data because we are not interested in the entire data. So the question we are interested in here is, I want to see if the composition of MPA rating that is given to different movies depends uh, on whether it's uh, whether the movie is comedy or drama, uh, right? So if it's a drama, we would expect that they will be more R-rated because uh, there tends to be more sensitive content uh, in these movies. Um, if you look at the plot, it's a very rich plot. Um, by default, it's giving you the descriptive statistics. So each slice is well labeled. It gives you the percentage corresponding to that slice. The legend tells you which uh, factor level it belongs to. 
if you look at each facet, so if you focus just on the comedy portion and just drama portion, there is chi-squared test. This test is telling you basically uh, goodness of fit test. Um, so result from uh, one sample proportion test. Um, so the defaults uh, are giving you goodness of fit test. They are also giving you Bayesian hypothesis testing. If you look at the caption, it's, uh, it's giving you an estimate for Kramer's V, which is the effect size here. And in the subtitle, you're getting results from Pearson chi-squared test. And the test is going to depend uh, on the design that you're choosing. So in, if the, in function call, you have specified paired is equal to false, it's going to give you Pearson chi-squared test. And if paired is equal to true, it's going to give you McNamara test. Um, but you can use it also just to carry out goodness of fit test, right? So if you have if you have set y is equal to null, it will run a goodness of fit and, uh, test, which is basically, um, so for example, in this case, data has four levels. Um, this is data from Titanic, uh, uh, Titanic ship, and x here is class, which is basically uh, passenger class. If uh, all people were equally likely to belong to different classes, so the null hypothesis here is that for each uh, factor level, the proportion will be 25%. Uh, and the, the goodness of fit test is, you know, checking against that null hypothesis and looking at the, P, you know, highly significant p-value, we can also clearly see this in the plot. That's not the case. Um, once again, here you can see that the, the pie chart is very well labeled, which kind of avoids the usual drawbacks of uh, having a pie chart because, uh, a uh, pie chart which is not labeled can be very difficult to, uh, uh, you know, decode the magnitudes and the proportions, etc. But here, all this uh, is tagged in the plot itself. Now, like I said, a lot of people don't like pie charts. Uh, for, I, I'm I'm not one of those people. I love pie charts, but for people who don't like them, ggstats plot also provides another option, which is ggbarstats. So basically, the pie chart is replaced by a bar chart, and everything else remains the same. I have just uh, changed the data set here uh, to give you uh, a different picture. So now let's move on to probably one of the most general uh, hypothesis testing that you can do, which is a, uh, about regression coefficients. And here, basically, uh, we have different kinds of regression models that we can run. It can have numeric data, uh, account level data, factors, what have you. Um, and this one function will, uh, one function called ggcoepstat will basically handle all of them. So the way this function works is you create a model object. So whatever regression model that you want to run. So here I'm creating an AOV, which is an ANOVA uh, object, and assigning it to a mod. And you just give this uh, op model object to the GEG coef stats, and it will display um, and it will display a coefficient plot for you. And by default, it will show you the estimate and its 95% confidence interval value, and will give you the statistic and its p-value and an appropriate uh, effect size. And if you look at the caption, it will also give you model summary, which is here AIC and BIC values. Um, in and of itself, this is not very useful, but often we have to compare different models, in which case you can compare AIC and BIC values to see which model is doing better. Um, by default, you can use this to get a plot back, but if you set output is equal to tidy or output is equal to glance, it can also give you back data frames uh, with, with, uh, with details, which are displayed in this plot. So currently, the package supports a huge number of regression models. Pretty much any um, regression model that you can think of, it's currently supported. And this is very much thanks to uh, the easy stats uh, package system, which uh, I'm also a contributor to. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, I'll highly recommend that you check it out for any regression uh, modeling related task. So if there is a regression object that, that is currently not implemented by the function, but you still want to use this function to display it, all you have to do is prepare a data frame with results and then give the data frame to this uh, function and then tell it what is the statistic type and it will then create the plot uh, based on the details that, that is included in the data frame. 
So as a convenience, there is another set of functions uh, to this uh, primary functions. These are basically grouped variants of all functions. Um, so oftentimes we have, uh, we have to carry out the same analysis for different levels of some independent factor. So for example, uh, for each subject or each participant, we have different conditions and uh, we want to figure out if uh, this analysis that we carried out for one participant, what if we do the same for each participant, right? So we'll have to uh, rerun the analysis for every participant uh, and we can use something like a for loop or, uh, or a per map but that will be very uh, cumbersome. So ggstasper provides group functions uh, uh, for, to, do, to facilitate this basically. So here's an example. Um, so as you can see, the basic function call is exactly the same except for one more variable, uh, one more argument, which is grouping.var. So grouping.var tells you what is the grouping variable that you want to use. And here I'm telling it to a, uh, setting it to AM. And as you can see, it runs the same analysis for two levels of this grouping variable, AM equal to zero, AM equal to one, and gives uh, returns combined plot. And once again, like nothing is compromised in terms of like the details that are contained in it. This is just to facilitate running the same analysis multiple times. And for every function that I have showed thus far, there is a group version available in the package. So, so far, like uh, what I've shown you is that um, package is giving you customized plots, right? But what if I don't like the default plots? What if I want to change things about the return plot? So the defaults that I have chosen, they are opinionated, yes, but uh, I have chosen these defaults based on the data visualization research, um, which has highlighted what are the best practices for preparing graphics. Um, so you can at least take some comfort in the fact that the defaults are kind of uh, database, database rules friendly. But if you still wanted to change some things, uh, ggstatsplot does allow that. So for example, one of the common things that people want to change is the aesthetics of the plot, right? You want to change the theme. So there is an argument called GG theme, uh, where you basically uh, uh, tell the package which GG theme you want to use, and you have um, hundreds of themes to choose from, from different packages. So you can choose the theme of your liking. Another thing that people want to change is color palettes, um, so you can, use these two arguments called palette and package, uh, which, um, uh, which, which basically ask you like which package you want to use uh, and which palette you used to use, uh, you want to use from that particular package. Um, so these aesthetic changes are really easy to make using these three arguments. So aesthetic preference should not be an excuse not to use this package, but keep in mind that the default palette is used as color, colorblind friendly. So any color palette you want, might want to choose just make sure that it's color blind friendly. And another important thing is that ggstatsplot is nothing but a ggplot uh, object, right? Like the plots it's, plot it's returning is ggplot object, which means that uh, you can just use ggplot2 commands to modify it post hoc. So for example, here I have created the plot using ggstatsplot, but then I'm doing plus some ggplot to uh, command. And here it's just basically a duplicate my y-axis and it works. So you can modify the ggstatsplot plots further using ggplot2 functions. Um, furthermore, you can also create like completely custom plots or you can use different packages that exist in the ggplot universe um, and prepare your own plot and use ggstatsplots just to extract the statistical details. So for example, here, what I have done is I have created an expression using ggstatsplot. So here you can see output is equal to subtitles gives me back an expression. And I save that expression in results object. And then I use that result um, to show these results in a subtitle um, in a plot that I have created using a different package, completely different package called ggraph extra, right? So I used uh, one package to create the plot, and then I used ggstatsplot to get the statistical details and then display them in the subtitle. Um, so you can use ggstatsplot um, to get back uh, plots, or you can also use it to 
uh, you know, get expressions that you can use then uh, in your custom plots. So why use this package? So what are the benefits of using it? And I'll just try to highlight some of them. So the first um, uh, benefit is like it supports different statistical approaches. So right, uh, the, here's a catalog of like different types of uh, statistics that different functions support. As you can see, most of the functions have a very comprehensive support uh, for parametric, non-parametric, robust, and base factor statistics. So these are like different statistical approaches uh, that have been developed over the years. Um, the most traditional one is, of course, parametric, and that's why the package defaults to this. But if you want to change the statistics, uh, it, it, the package makes it really easy. And look, you can think of uh, Jesus stats plot as a, as a as a portal, let's say, to access all the functionality that is afforded by wide swath of packages that are designed for these different kinds of statistics. But the, the advantage is that all you need to usually do is data X and Y and just figure out the type and the package will do everything behind the scenes for you. Because that's where the difficulty lies because different packages expect uh, you to provide the data in sometimes in wide format, sometimes in long format, sometimes as a matrix, sometimes as a data frame. But in Jesus Task Plot, you don't have to worry uh, about that aspect at all. This also makes uh, toggling between different statistical approaches really easy. So let's say you run um, uh, you run all your analysis with the parametric approach, but uh, in your publication, for example, and during um, peer review, the reviewer asks that you should actually use non-parametric statistics. All you have to do then is just replace in your script type is equal to P with type is equal to NP, and that's it. Your entire analysis will be changed uh, to non-parametric statistics, and you, you wouldn't have to do uh, a lot of work. It tries to um, follow best practices in statistical reporting. For all statistical uh, tests that are reported, you always get the test description parameter for that test if there is one statistic value significance uh, if, if it's a it's, if it's a parametric test, um, effect size plus confidence intervals, and number of observations. So it's a very rich um, uh, detail that follows the American Psychological Association's gold standard for how we should report stats. Uh, these are also statistically informed uh, test defaults. So, of course, it's always changing. Uh, what are the best things we should do uh, in terms of um, what kind of statistical tests we should be using? So, for example, latest research shows that we should be defaulting to Welch's t-test and Welch's ANOVA uh, over students' t-test and Fisher's ANOVA um, because uh, it, it has better power um, and it also protects against uh, false positives better. Um, functions default reporting unbiased effect size measures, which are to be preferred over biased effect size measures. Um, also, whenever multiple tests are carried out, p-values are adjusted by default, etc. So it basically makes sure that, like by default, it's doing uh, the best it can to stick to the what are considered, at least right now, to be the best statistical procedures. It also avoids uh, reporting errors. So uh, I'm not sure about how this holds up in different fields, but a recent analysis in psychology showed that one in eight papers contains grossly inconsistent p-value that might affect the statistical conclusion. Um, and because here the, the statistics is tied to the plot itself, it's very, dif uh, it's very difficult to make an error here. Uh, most, of this time, most of the times these inconsistencies or mistakes that you see uh, result from Copy pasting results from you know a soft a GUI software or our console window to a Microsoft Word document or something like that. Another problem is making sense of null results, um, and that this is where the combination of frequentist and Bayesian statistics uh, comes into play. So as you might have noticed in all the defaults uh, in ggstats plot, you have the parametric statistics uh, or the frequentist statistics in the subtitle and the base factors or the Bayesian statistics in the caption. And here the, uh, the idea is that if the result is non-significant, sometimes people argue that that means that the effect is absent. But actually a base factor analysis can show you that that actually means that there is evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. This is not something that the frequentist statistics can do. So in order to correctly interpret 
uh, non-significant results that let us correctly interpret the results when your p-value is above, above uh, 0.05. You need to have base factors uh, 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 for that for that particular analysis to see if there is actually evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. So having both of this um, uh, both of these statistical details in the same plot uh, provides or makes it very easy for the reader to assess for themselves whether you know the alternative hypothesis is supported or the null hypothesis is supported. So just to summarize what we have uh, seen so far, so using ggstats plot uh, makes it unnecessary to use like a scores of different packages for statistical analysis. So often what, what one might want to do is like use one package to get the stats, use another package to get uh, the effect size, then another package to get base factor, yet another package to get pairwise comparisons, et cetera. But here you like one function is doing all that by default. So minimal amount of code is needed. Usually all you need is data X and Y, and that's it, you're set, uh, which minimizes chances for error and makes for very tidy scripts and readable scripts. It conveniently toggles between different statistical approaches. It truly makes your figures worth a thousand words, uh, especially if you're, if you're using this for publishing your results. Um, it, it makes it very easy for the readers to appreciate you know, your raw data and like they can appreciate whether the statistical assumptions hold uh, for the test that you're running. Also, you, you, there's no need to copy paste results um, to the text editor because everything is contained in the figure or the image itself. So you don't have to copy paste anything anywhere. Uh, disembodied figures stand on their own are easy to evaluate for the reader, right? Like usually in publications, what you have is um, the, the d data is visualized uh, in a plot and the stats are reported somewhere else in the text. So if I want to um, evaluate whether the statistical assumptions for the test that they ran actually hold, and I want to look at the data, I have to keep going back and forth between the plot and the statistical results. But here, because those two things are right next to each other, it makes it very easy to evaluate for the reader. And additionally, there's more breathing room for theoretical discussion and other text. Like if you're spending so much time just describing your uh, results in results section, and it, that takes up a whole lot of space uh, in the text, um, you might not have a lot of uh, text left uh, to devote to discussion or other things, especially uh, for, for journals which have a text limit, right? You have, they have word limit, you can only uh, have so many words, and if, most of these statistical details are included in the plot itself, you're actually going to be left with a lot more text uh, to use for discussion. And no need to worry about updating your plots and your statistical analysis uh, separately because those two are tied together, right? If anything about the data changes, all you have to do is rerun the uh, analysis and the plot and the stats will uh, automatically change together. So you, you never have discrepancy between these two things. So what are some of the misconceptions about the package? I, I want to clear them up just so that like people don't walk away with the wrong idea. So one of the um, misconceptions I have come across is that people think that this is an alternative to learning ggplot2. This is absolutely false. Uh, in fact, the better you know ggplot2, the more you can uh, make the, the more you can actually get out of ggstats plot because then you know how to change the custom, uh, uh, how, you, how to change the defaults or how to modify certain aspects of the plot that you want to, uh, that you want to modify. So of course, um, if, if, if you want to use the package, of, uh, it's going to be really easy to use, but it, in, it's no, it is in no way meant as an alternative to learning ggplot2. Another, um, Misconception is that it's meant to be used in talks and presentations. Uh, you can use them, but I'm not sure if it's, uh, the, if it's a good idea. I think the default plots can be a bit complicated for effectively communicating your results in time-constrained presentation settings. So for example, in a conference talk where uh, you don't have a lot of time to spend on each slide, um, you can't have such complicated plots uh, because it'll be very difficult to walk the audience through them in limited time. 
Uh, and also another, mis I never said this, but some people think that this is the only game in town in terms of like mixing stats and uh, plot itself. That's not true. There are some GUI softwares uh, like Jasp and Jamovie. I would highly recommend that you check them out if you don't like to code and would much rather use uh, a software. Um, both of these are based in R. Um, and both of them can give you uh, plot and stats together, and they're excellent softwares. So uh, what, to end, we want, would like to understand what are some of the limitations of the, this approach. So first is that, of course, there are very limited kinds of plots available. Um, there are very few kinds of plots uh, available here because I had to start from the plots that are the most common or which are needed for the most common types of hypothesis that one might test. Another one is that there are a limited number of statistical tests available. Um, and that's just always going to be the case because uh, it, statistical analysis is a huge universe and no package is going, no single package at least is going to pro cover all of that. So for example, in this package, you, you saw that there is nothing about time series analysis um, or you know, some other kinds of analysis, more complicated factorial designs, et cetera. Um, so this is, of course, something that I, I would like to work on in the future, uh, but this is just to say that it's, it's always going to be an unfinished work. And another limitation is that although it is beginner friendly, it expects a non-trivial level of statistical proficiency, right? So as you must have seen in the plots, there are a lot of rich statistical details involved in them, but one might not always understand uh, uh, what all of this entails. So it requires a lot of uh, training to truly understand all the details. All, but of course, even within your first um, semester of you know, statistics, you might understand some of the details. So for example, details of a t-test, correlation test, those are covered pretty early, but Bayesian estimation and hypothesis testing might come uh, a bit later. That said, you can always use this package just to produce plots without the statistics. So all functions have an argument which lets you turn off uh, the, the statistical analysis. So you can also use this package just for visualizations. No need to display the statistics. Another big limitation for me is that it doesn't in, uh, implement the faceting, um, which is um, a very important uh, functionality that ggplot2 gives. Um, and it's currently not implemented in ggstatsplot. And it's a rather bulky API uh, because it all functions have a lot of function arguments that you need to keep in mind. But the saving grace is that defaults are sufficient most of the time. As you might have noticed in the, all the examples that I showed, uh, all I used is data X and Y and that's it. And you didn't have to you know, modify it much further. And so at least in exploratory data analysis, you might not have to change much. How one can overcome these limitations? So of course, people like you um, who are uh, very enthusiastic about R and who feel, if you feel like contributing, you're more than uh, welcome to contribute um, to this uh, repository. The ways in which you can contribute um, is, is the following. You can read and correct any uh, inconsistent in the documentation, uh, documentation. You can raise issues about bugs. You can review code. and. Of course, this requires much more commitment on your part, but you can also add new functionality. And to end, I would like to acknowledge uh, all the people who have contributed in whatever way they can to ggstatsplot. I would also like to thank other developers uh, who have uh, helped me um, in some of the implementations in these packages, my advisors who have supported my uh, software work, and yeah, and this CSS template comes from Garrick. If you want to reach out to me, uh, either to uh, discuss any of this further, or you know, uh, you want to provide some feedback, uh, these are my details. Um, and you can, for more information about this package, you can uh, see the website. This website, which has way more details uh, about all the functions, uh, there are detailed vignettes, etc. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, thanks a lot. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, thank you, Indra. It was uh, really 
instructive uh, and thank you for this presentation it was very clear and i think now you have uh, a good idea about how to use uh, gs stats plot uh, I think we have uh, a question from Miriam, uh, who said, will it work uh, with facet wrap function or not? Yeah, I, like I said in limitations, unfortunately, it doesn't uh, work um, with facet wrapping, at least right, not right now. It can only do one facet wrap, which is what is implemented in the group functions, but it doesn't do the full um, facet wrap that is provided by ggplot2. And I also see another question about non-parametric stress, but I guess I already addressed that. You can do non-parametric statistics as well. Uh, I think uh, we don't have other question. Okay. Please don't hesitate if you have uh, questions, dear participants. Yeah, and like I'm also posting the slide link. So if anyone wants to like revisit the slides, you can just follow the link. Um, and yeah, if you have any further questions, like my email address is there. My You can also raise issues on the GitHub repository so that I can uh, respond to that. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for organizing this. This was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. And uh, Indra, if you have another package or you want to talk about another topic, you're welcome. We can Thank organize you. another meeting, uh, another <laughs> meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank so, you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Indra. And um, actually, this is our last meetup for this year, 2020. And uh, we have a lot of uh, surprises for you uh, for 2021. 20, uh, so uh, follow us uh, in uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook in order to know more about uh, our next events. So thank you very much. Mune, if you have something else to say, uh, Thank you all for joining us today. Yeah, that was that has been a really great year, um, full of uh, great meetup and uh, new uh, new uh, knowledge and uh, hope yeah. to see you uh, with us so, next year. Thanks all. Yeah, I will share with you uh, also our uh, YouTube channel where uh, you can find all uh, our previous meetups and. Uh, if you like it, uh, please uh, be one of uh, our, uh, how to say it? In, I know the word in French, but I don't know it in uh, English. But uh, follow us if you like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't hesitate to, to, sus, to, sus, to subscribe in it and follow us for, uh, for more. This is the link. And as I said, uh, we will wait for you uh, in January. We will uh, have a very uh, good start uh, for 2021. So we will share our uh, events uh, soon in uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and also Meetup. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, have a nice uh, evening and uh, enjoy your holidays and stay safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Keep in touch.